you're wondering where we are, then now you know. And if this looks familiar, then you probably know what we're doing. And if you don't know what we're doing, I'll tell you. It is the annual, uh, let me get this right, South Karelian Military March, and we are doing the Verustilika uh, civilian or military version remote military march challenge. Uh, I'm going to put a link to their website below if you want to do this. It's an annual event, last weekend in April, and this is our third year in a row, right? Yep. Yeah, so um, I haven't filmed. This is the highway portion, super boring, lots of transport trucks, lots of cars, but when we get to the top of this long hill, we're getting onto the logging roads and things might get a little more interesting there. Oh, this is way better. Pretty soon we won't even hear the highway anymore. We were reminiscing about our last two years of doing this hike. This is basically where you found that $20 bill last yeah, year. Sticking out of the sand and usually I'm the eagle eye. But Tara spotted it, so she got to keep it. Um, and so actually, in the shady parts, there are some snow banks left. This was haul road all winter, which means that they would have been um, plowing it, traveling it. Snow would have got compacted in the ditches. So there are some remnants. Uh, but the last two years that we've been out here, it was basically a mix of snow, like skidoo packed snow and mud. So uh, this year is going to be quite a bit different because everything's dried out. The trail's been well maintained. So we'll see what we see. I'm also doing a, kind of a, a gear test, a trial run. So this is a birthday gift vest from somebody special. And uh, it is a search and rescue version uh, load bearing vest. So uh, I don't have quite all the attachments on. And I was in a rush this morning. I haven't set it all up the way I obviously would permanently set it up but I made sure I have enough stuff that I'm over my 20 pound requirement for the hike so I have a 10 pound dumbbell in the back here kettlebell that's kind of bouncing around in an awkward way but everything else is just gear weight so uh, I got a, a GPS and a radio some first aid stuff some snack stuff some I don't even know what else just pockets of stuff my phone this camera and um, so far it's pretty good oh yeah and a water bladder so this is the first time I've ever used a water bladder and it's uh, way more convenient than I would have imagined instead of feeling like it's a chore every time I want to find my water bottle for a drink it's like right there so that's cool um, I don't know what else I'm gonna say right now but uh, we're doing 25 kilometers I'm gonna track this on my uh, what is this Garmin instinct so we've been out for two hours and we've done 6.6 .6 kilometers. That doesn't sound right. No, there's no way. No. Two hours is usually around 10 kilometers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but anyway, I'll, I'll pull it up on my app later and drop a screenshot of how much work we did to uh, haul 20 pounds, 25 kilometers on a about a third highway kilometers, two thirds bush road logging road kilometers um last year we saw moose i didn't get them on camera but you know hopefully if there's something interesting i catch it for you guys lots of cool tracks the migratory birds are just starting to arrive so there are winter wrens i saw a pair of broad-winged hawks yesterday the woodcocks have been calling um lots of chickadees on territories yeah, oh yeah, spring peepers. I heard my first spring peepers of the season. Uh, calling just in a ditch on the highway. So, we're marching. We're rucking. Oh, they all stopped. Look at that blue sky. Yeah. We're going to get sunburns today, Tara. Could hear some geese calling. And I had deja vu of filming geese flocks last year. Say, yeah. Surprised me last year. Yeah. Um, remember we went down that road though when I was birding and we stopped oh, at yeah. that big swamp 
I'm wondering if they're in that swamp, maybe that they're all on water calling and not in the air. That's where the moose was last year, right by the seven kilometer marker. So we're nine kilometers on the highway, we're seven kilometers in, 11 kilometers to go. Did I do bad math? I think so, like if you have nine kilometers to go. Okay. Because nine plus seven is 16. Yeah. 25 minus 16. Tara maths better than I do. I don't know if I am mathing right now. You are. You are. No, it's nine. Sorry, you can't see me because I have the camera clipped to my vest. Take it off. Take it off. <laughs> That's the sound of the white pines. The wind in the white pines. But it makes a different sound when it goes through the white pines. That is a camp sound to me. And you too, right? Yeah. Oh, a woodpecker. There's lots of uh, yellow-bellied sapsuckers calling too. Okay, we're going to take you for a little walk and then uh, speed the footage up, put some quiet music in the background. Here we go. Or we can just talk through the whole thing and then when it's playing at high speed, it'll just be like... <laughs> salamander eggs in there that's always fun to see in these vernal pools hey okay, more or maybe I can get closer to these ones all oh, these ones look different uh, is that what they are though? yeah very cool there's more over there as well signs of spring it's my first time using this vest so I'll do a little like a uh, recap overview I guess at the end of the hike talk about um, how it went we're 20 kilometers in and I've got 22 pounds plus this camera of weight so it's not insignificant but it feels pretty comfy <laughs> got my, I think I got this backpack in high school, but it's starting to fall apart in a few different spots and it's not super comfy. No, it's made for a long back, but you're a short back. Um, so it's, yeah, it has lasted a really long time. That's an Arcteryx bag. I'd buy another one of those just based on the longevity, but not that style. It just doesn't fit right. Fit you right either? Not really. Sometimes it sits like right at the bottom of my lower back, yeah. like near my tailbone, and it's got a hard bottom part that um, that's stiff, I guess, to hold the shape. But then it pushes on your bones. That's what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to get it to ride up high enough on your shoulders. That one. Yeah, this spot was a mud hole last year, right? Mud and ice. And this year it's like half dry. It's fun doing the same hike annually and kind of just seeing the differences. Right now there's no snow but there there isn't really any understory greenery yet. So the trout lilies are all kind of poking up a little bit. That one's almost ready to go flower actually. But those um, leaves are still really dry. Not a lot has popped yet. But so we have four days of rain coming, so I imagine that's all going to change pretty quickly as long as the temperatures stay above zero. 
It's a very peaceful day. And uh, one of the reasons is because we left the dogs back. So they're not just running up and down the road, barking and growling at each other. Uh, but my dog's got a, some kind of an injury. So didn't want to take her on a 25 kilometer walk, nor along the highway, because she's not very good on leash. She's kind of free range. And when she is on leash, she just pulls and pulls and pulls and pulls. That's what she's bred for, I guess. But we'll try and get them out for a walk tomorrow. But they'll be excited to see us when we get back, which is not too long from now. We're almost at the end of this logging road. And then we'll be back on a maintained road. And then soon after that, we'll be closing our loop. Do a little gear chat at the end. And uh, then it's going to be snack time and maybe drink time. Okay, we're closing the loop and look at that. Guess how many kilometers, Tara? 24.7. Wow, 24.54. Oh. And I actually um, started this a couple hundred meters late, so. Yeah, so what I said. We are over our 25 kilometers says that we walked for four minutes shy of five hours so that might actually be a faster time than last year four minutes shy of, yeah we didn't stop that's why yeah i only talked to uh i only talked to one person on the road this time but only for two seconds yeah last time we had a few a few convos and we had a couple of actual breaks last time too like we stopped oh, yeah. for an apple. snacks and stuff yeah. this time we just powered through because if i stop i'm not starting again yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, when I stop. Tara's got a sore muscle that'll seize up, so. But we're about to stop. We just closed our loop. Okay, it's been uh, a couple days since that hike, actually. I got caught up doing some other things, but I remembered that I did want to talk to you about this um, vest, which was a gift from Tara for my big birthday a few weeks ago. Um, it was my first time trying it out, so I had it loaded up with... Uh, 22 pounds approximately and we did that 25 kilometer hike um, and uh, so far I liked it so I'm gonna talk a little bit about it and I don't know oh yeah you can still see where I got a nice uh, sunburn it's just tanning up nicely now though so this vest came from a Canadian company and they sell three variations of it so they have a hunting version uh, survival version and a search and rescue version uh, which basically ships with different combinations or types of um, pockets and attachments and this one is the search and rescue version it's a one size fits most and I don't have all the uh, pockets attached to it yet so most of them are on here uh, I'm I'm new to Molly if you can believe that I uh, have not messed around with all these molly panels and connections and things before so I'm still kind of figuring out how to get everything on here uh, but this is the main uh, pouch and for the hike that's where I had a 10 pound kettlebell uh, to add some weight to this vest which is probably not like ideal to just have 10 pounds sitting right there at the top of your uh, backside or the small of your back um, but it worked out the shoulders I need to bring this vest up a bit so I'm gonna have to tighten these shoulder straps I know that um, and I did have a bit of a hot spot on the one side which I initially thought was from the um, drinking tube which uh, again was like super convenient to have a uh, drinking tube and a bladder um, I thought maybe the tube was rubbing underneath the shoulder but I think it was just more about where that buckle ended up sitting um, so hopefully when I adjust it, it uh, is okay. Although there are uh, pretty nice pads for the shoulders here. Uh, what have I got? Two electronics pockets. So uh, in the one I had um, a, a, a radio, just a, a plain Jane radio. I've got a notebook, I've got a, a pen. Um, there are also two first aid pouches. I guess I could angle the camera a little bit, maybe make this a little easier on me. There's a bit better. So I've got two first aid pouches. I don't have them loaded with first aid gear um, just yet, but I will have uh, some emergency first aid supplies 
in there in the future. It's got this uh, cool, this is like a shell pouch. Um, so you see it's got some uh, shell webbing in there. I could also put um, flares. I have emergency flares that would probably fit in there. Uh, but it happened to be my snack pouch. So I had jammed a whole bunch of these uh, energy protein bars in here and ate a few of those while we were on our hike. So that's a pretty helpful little um, pouch. There it is. To have, what else did I do? I shoved some uh, glow sticks in here because that always looks cool and uh, in an actual uh, event, like those would be handy to have probably. Um, had a couple flashlights maybe and other, other things that made up weight. Uh, spare batteries for my GPS, which I uh, took off of the vest in the meantime, but I had a GPS. I have a rain poncho shoved into this pocket um, in case it rained. So it's good. It's a zip up and then it has all these um, buckles to help take the, the weight off the zipper, I guess, or stress off the zipper. And I'm really looking forward to kind of adjusting this, playing with this, trying different uh, gear setups. And um, I'll probably end up using this quite a bit uh, this spring. So I'm almost into the fourth year of the third Ontario Breeding Bird Atlas. It's a five-year project. Um, so we're almost into our peak breeding period. And I do a lot of bird surveys. Uh, and I think this is going to be perfect for carrying around like camera, binoculars, uh, field notes, uh, spare batteries for my uh, my cell phone. I, I use the Merlin app to help me with ID sometimes. Um, and I think that's going to be good. And especially just to have water like right there. Ready to drink. So, so far I'm giving this vest two thumbs up. Uh, really enjoying it. Oh, what else did I... I remembered in the meantime, like it's been a couple days, but I did do a... Uh, a trip to two of my favorite stores um, Princess Auto and Cabela's Bass Pro so I did get some flagging tape this was like really inexpensive at Princess Auto and that's something that's gonna live somewhere on this vest uh, as well a bit of flagging tape um, and in an upcoming video I'm gonna test out I bought some uh, three dollar shears from princess auto so what does three dollars get you um basically they were so inexpensive that i built five custom first aid kits and i just have a pair of shears with every one it was really easy to do um and i'm going to test those out maybe on some uh, old car hard pants or something heavy and see um see if they work out for that so end of april I uh, hope everybody's having a good spring. Uh, it's just starting to green up here, which means we're moving into some spring edibles, uh, some spring trout fishing, gardening, putting the chickens out on pasture, bringing in firewood, uh, shutting down the maple syrup operation. Uh, so it's a big changeover in the next couple of weeks. And I'll be looking to film some of those activities and putting them out there for you. As well as updating, I, uh, I really fell off of my um, hours today's survival challenge. So if you aren't familiar with that, it's um, looking at increasing our personal resiliency from uh, 72 hour emergency preparedness to 72 days emergency preparedness. So I do have some material prepared to talk about emergency fuel, uh, propane, electric, diesel, wood gasoline generators solar panels that kind of thing uh, so look for that in the near future as well okay catch you on the next one youtube and uh see you there pileated woodpeckers all the woodpeckers actually uh if you're still watching and uh you don't find birds super boring they're all kind of in their peak breeding so they're an early uh early on territories and for breeding so there's a pair of flickers the yellow shafted flickers and they like to drill on the roof uh, of my solar panel shed and on my house and they also have been doing some interesting mating displays on my um, electric pole 
well, the chickens are mating as well. The sop suckers are all been here and like making a big racket as well. And then uh, obviously the Pileated woodpeckers, which you just heard, I, I uh, caught them doing some interesting behaviors last spring. Um, and I guess they're back at it. You know what it is. Okay, there it is. <laughs>